Okay, hello everyone. This is gonna be take one on a demo review of Viaduct where I am doing quite well. Hopefully it will be helpful. I've seen some demand for a Pyro demo review from me. Without further ado, I'm just gonna give this a go and see what happens. So the first thing you want to focus on when you go into Viaduct as a Pyro is probably to try to deny the enemy demo's damage. If you do run the power check on this map, then yeah, as you can see, you can, even the first sticky you can sell off the it. Now is not the primest of examples, but yeah. As a second note, lets you the fact how aggressive you are in that situation lets me follow up and just jump on the demo, and it basically wins us the middle at this point. There's not much to do other than really spy check, I guess, and watch for suicides. Because ideally the enemy team would be looking to get a medic right now, at least for us. We end up having to give up because we lose our heavies, which I believe they get sniped. Really nothing we can do about it. We got kind of early. But I noticed that, as you can see, their pyro wasn't with the demo one, so it's a really good kind of situation to just basically rush the guy. I end up dealing a 220 damage to him, probably getting frustrated with no one dealt the damage to him. But important to note, I didn't overchase the demo one, because I probably would have died to that heavier scout. Now, at this point, I noticed Hildreth's weak, so. Even though I'm kind of in a very open position, it's it's a good idea to be where I was at that point, just so in case someone does try to rush Hildreth to finish him off, I can intercept that person. Because that's basically Viaduct is the kind of mob where your priority is just gonna be keeping people alive, and of course you want to go forward to deny the demo damage from stickies, because. The enemy that normally was in a really good position to do a serious amount of damage, but the spy goes in and you know, picks him up sadly. It's it's an opportunity cost that arises really often in Spyro, and I I believe that it's much better to well, kill stuff than just be overly passive all the time. Because essentially if you're passive all the time then you're just giving the spy the spy's just doing his work by you being passive. Like he's denying at least one player the damage and stuff just by making a spy check. I went right there at the beginning, which in retrospect is kind of a mistake because my team was left. And that's something that I was kind of struggling with at the time, and I guess I still am. Um... Okay, that's a spy. Shit happens. Um, yeah, basically listening to where your team is it comes like that is very important. On maps like that. And I saw the spy, and I'm pretty sure I killed him. But. What can you do? It's still not the end of the world, because it's really easy in this map to just. Well, recover completely. See, I run over. Well, the spice is a revolver there. That's something you should always do as a pyro, and even as different classes, like NG or Scout, for example. Um, if he does give you ammo, that means he's definitely dead as dead winger. And you can never quite be sure, because even if even if you set him on fire, there is the potential of him not being set on fire after the winners. So even though Perlotsa wasn't using the spice, you always want to make sure. Plus, it does give you ammo, which is always nice. Now I ended up dealing a good deal of damage to the spy, but I decided not to chase him too much. What I did pay attention to though is the amount of ammo that sadly I missed those reflects, but that's not such a big deal. I ended up denying most of the super though, which is really good, and I'm pretty sure Pedox is gonna get Emilio. I would be really sad if- oh, it's, it's Bulo. Oh, oh, that's that's probably why the game is so close after all. Um, yeah. What was I on about? Ammo, ammo's good. Yeah, you wanna have ammo. 
play by play though. I know the part that the spies on top of the house. If I were to chase him, he probably would have just gone straight in without without being able to do anything. And I do believe I end up killing him with that 50 damage shot. Jumbo. Yeah, I, I go for this kind of forward hold thing. This is mostly in case a lone sniper or something comes out. Because, yeah, I def especially if you're, off if you're an offense, it's really worth it to uh, to trade your life for a sniper. Because of how huge he is on this map. There, uh, I was hoping to get that heavy faster. Hoping maybe our heavy would follow up on him. Because I think there was an angle where he could have done that. But, oh well, sad days. Not the end of the world again. We're on offense, so the, the spawn is really short. And them not having a heavy makes it much more difficult for them to push out. Because all the damage they'll be taking and coming in is going to be on the demo man and stuff. And since it's Emilio, he's probably going to be really mad about it. I end up getting quite lucky with that spy. On the other hand, he was really lucky with 4 HP left as well. Because, yeah, TF2 is a game of luck. Now, we end up getting an Uber and we kill a lot of people. I I wasn't Uber most of the... well, half of the Uber or something didn't go to me and that was really frustrating to me. Because I feel like I could have just killed everything. But... Also, because I was frustrated at the time, I ended up not seeing the soldier at all on the right. So it's a really ambiguous situation. Especially for a medic, as to where you went, where you, who you were in that situation. But yeah, I think definitely you can you can do some work there. Even just delay them from, uh, even just stay in the point and be like a meat shield, basically. As for that mid, uh, I get sniped towards the beginning, and honest, it's kind it kind of is a big deal, but all you really can do in that situation is just make sure he's called and where he is. If you trust your sniper anyway, he can definitely do some work with just knowing where the sniper is. And that's definitely a high priority for everyone, every teammate on Viaduct. Because if you have a good sniper, a smart sniper like Frobermus, you should really be able to, uh, he should really be able to take advantage of where the sniper is. Just basic sightlines and stuff. I end up missing those reflex, which is really confusing, because I thought they would have hit Definitely, but it might have been a ping issue. If that's just an excuse, please don't hate you. At this point, I'm kind of soft contesting the point, but I notice my team back out. I'm just looking for a way out. Spot the sniper on the way, definitely call him. I think it's a crates right mid or something. You want to be really concise with how you call him, but also obviously you want to be able. You want your teammates to be able to know. Which I guess kind of comes with experience. Yeah. Um, they're kind of a positional slash decision making mistake for me. I don't think I was aware of my team capping the point and I ended up backing out even though I had like a 50 HP or something left. Ended up getting sniped but that's, that's really not something you can do much about. Someone has to be cut on this point, and then we're on the point we don't. I think we just didn't have a clear main call at that specific moment of what to do, so we just ended up hanging around the point and getting picked off. Again, not that big of a deal, you can still quite easily recover. I got a reflect. Um, yeah, 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 it's not bad. Again, my team's on the point. I I do I have low health, so I don't want to just run in on the point because there is that chance that someone's going to be blocking it quite heavily. Like at this point, I've got a shitload of crit kills on me, which is when you don't take damage for ten or more seconds, and I'm I'm really mad because I just want to do sixty so I can focus on other stuff. But yeah, it's it's not something you should be mad about with your medic. At this point, I know the spy is still behind us, so. Uh, Basically, you want to think about what kind of uh, target they'd be going for. I think Kissa actually ends up getting picked by the spy. And there I finally do spot him, which is good. 
and I noted he had the regular watch because he declared silently so I didn't have to check that ammo which would have been convenient otherwise this view model is really annoying Alert. The control point is being captured. there we go yeah you can't do an everything in Spyro you can, you can try but it's just gonna make it frustrated so if there's situations like like that demo on mid where Hildra ends up getting, uh, getting stabbed, I can't do much about it. Well, I'm so lucky. Um, so yeah, just you've done you've done half the job. You've protected him from the threats back and forwards in front of him. If you can't, like, it's understandable that you wouldn't be able to do it from the back as well. Some people will argue that you have a heavy or something to watch the front and the demo himself. I think. That's not always the case in some situations because the heavy is a really slow class for him to cover the front. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I think that's pretty much it for this argument. We do notice a spy. You saw the flame particles on him kind of follow him in the direction where he's going. You, I, I saw that and I managed to rid him of his spicycle, which means another. Is it 15 20 seconds or something? Of no stabby stabby. Which is good enough for me, because at that point he's just gonna. Yeah, see, he's just revolvering, which is really useless at that point. I hear him and I lose him, because bicycle. Sometimes you can track him, but with, with better spies it doesn't happen often, honestly. It's basically just a. Just a case of predicting where the ammo pack is gonna be. But obviously, on a map like Fire, that where he can basically go any direction and find some kind of ammo or just this team's teammates, then. Yep, uh, then. Not much you can do. And you've, you've denied him something, at least. You do HP to him and you rid him of his bicycle, which means he's gonna have to be passive for at least some time. Now, in this situation, my team's been forward hold on Cliff. And there's not much I can do about it, but basically we just have to rush the point because there's 5 seconds left. I'm hoping the scout is going to run the point. He delays slightly, but we end up making it. Now, uh, yeah, I, I decide not to stay because I think it's much, much more valuable if I just go forward and deal with people in front of me. Because the person that was capping was the scout, who is a really, really fragile scout. Fragile uh, player if he has to stay in place. I guess conversely he could just be going forward, but yeah, it works out in the end. And I think it's uh, even if I die in that situation, I I ended up that's a heavy. Hello, heavy. I end up dealing a shit ton of damage to him. I get the heavy because he's blind or something. They Uber. Pretty sure we. Oh, we also have Uber. I think he drops me. Yeah, we dropped Hildreth and me, which is really bad in an even Uber situation. And this is about to get really scrappy and this blow is huge. Or I guess Newton and the scout can go huge too. Or so everyone can go huge. It's such a such a good team. Everyone goes huge. I love this team. Uh, now we. So this is this is like a really really odd moment where we kind of just. I think we lose. Yeah, we lose. If we didn't drop the players in the over, we probably would have won. But again, not such a big deal. You can. It's it's first to three rounds. No point being mad at your medic, shouting at him. Oh my god, you fucking idiot! Doesn't make sense. You just you just make him play worse. Again, the nice stickies as much as you can. Try not to or blast them into your plant like I just did. Um, pipes. The thing about reflecting pipes is you really have to you have to think more than you'd think <laughs> about whether you do reflect them or not. I don't even bother checking if that spy is real or not, because he wasn't. It gets kind of obvious at some points. Um, the reason I'm standing there right now is possibly to, uh, to make space for my flank so we can have like, an energy go forward and our soldier. But I guess Newland didn't have ammo or something and didn't put a mini sentry down and it was jumping left so it didn't, didn't get as much. But it's still very valuable intel on where their teammates are, so like if there was a sniper they obviously want to call it and if there was a medic there you want to call it, stuff like that. 
Darcy, I, I check it. It seems that it wasn't a real spike because it was 31, but that's just because... Uh, that's just because I was running at the time. What else? The, the shooting stickies thing. That's something that pockets in 6 is do a lot. And scouts, obviously. Anything with hits can should do it. Possibly, if I didn't kill them, our medic would have died. I would say it's a waste of ammo or something, waste of time. But honestly, stickies do a lot of damage. It's basically damage denied. It's a potential 2 or 300 damage he could have done him. He just, he just denied it by shooting. It's easy game, easy life. We're in this awkward position where we just stand on the point and I tend to just go forward and see what's going on in those situations. Hello milk. You can reflect the milk. It's it's really good if you can reflect it on someone. Sometimes you miss. It happens, don't worry. It happens to me. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm terrible at this game. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm just going forward to the left, because this is... Was that a spy? Uh, I think I bumped a spy. Um, this is often a spot where snipers go, cliff in general. And due to how that sightline... I got scouts at the front. Due to how that sightline works, you can catch off the cast sniper of guard, but he ends up being right side. Um, I guess I stayed there for too long, but... It was such a minor error that it's not really something... I can afford to worry about too much. Because there's, there's so many good plays you can make. And I guess staying on the flank, being killed by the soldier isn't a very good play. But hey, it works. Random rockets being reflected. Deathmatch really isn't. Well, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what point I'm trying to make, so I'm just gonna shut up. Now there's an Uber. Uh, we end up having the Uber. Now, in this situation, I think I got too much of the Uber, honestly. Because there was no damage on me. And then, I think Hildur dies. It's, it's really, really unfortunate. Get 75 health, very good, very good. Now, we still have a whopping 3 minutes on the clock, so I'm not being desperate for the point. Because, uh, I believe if I, if I died defending it, then it would have switched me to the defensive spawn wave, which is much longer than the offensive one. So I would have ended up to being dead for another 20 seconds or something. Or so I can just stay alive, because chances are I would have... I maybe would have delayed the cap by like 3 seconds or something. But... I wouldn't have prevented them from capping. I, would have, I wouldn't have won the game right there and then. So yeah, stay alive, stay alive and stay alive, and staying alive is good. Problem with the airship. And yeah, we win shortly after. I want to think partially because we because we stayed alive, me and Bulo. But it's probably mostly just DM and picks and Zoop jumped the medic really well as well. It's just, it's just teammates, teammates do stuff. And especially, as, see I replayed the milk, it's really good. They're, uh, I noticed doing mini crit damage to the heavy, and uh, from that it's kind of an okay assumption to make that he isn't fully buffed, because he takes mini crit damage so was really fast mid, so he probably didn't get that much heals. Also spice. Yeah, that's, that's kind of always the, the line of thought that I have. The night demo. Then look for people going forward, then look for spy. You can... it's kind of like a biological clock in a way, where uh, with... The, the longer the more you play, you kind of develop and... Oh, oh, you should... no, no. Oh. Yeah, I should have used my flare from more in that scout fight. I, I could have, like, let them on fire, that's like 50 damage, kill them. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, uh, an internal clock, sixth sense kind of thing. You can you can kind of imagine when uh, when the what's his name the spy is gonna go in based on just how much time has passed since the run begun and uh, it's also something that you start yeah I'm I'm really stuck at this point and I, I, all I need is just a way out but they're on the point and I can't really do anything 
I think I end up getting a couple kills on the flank here, which is quite nice. I like, I like kills on the flank, very good. Um, when you hide around the corner, you think it's really good to have a flamethrower at, and it's true to a sense. Oh, I, I, missed, I missed a couple of shots. It's not that bad. Um, but the flamethrower is a really long weapon, and it sticks out. Now, I call the sniper button left. And it's a really tricky way to approach him, because as he's going up cliff, he's going to notice you. At this point, the NG also calls me. So, I also need to worry about avoiding mini sentries. The NG spotted me pretty much as soon as I left the house. And there was a pyro on the left, so there was no way for me to get out alive. So I just go for the desperate sniper play, and it does work out. That's a bookmark. Um, oh, Grant just stopped being AFK, what the fuck? See, this is why, this is why it's two one and not three zero, or zero three. Um, yeah, pretty just sucks. Okay, just kidding. Um, moving on. I get sniped. Getting sniped is a thing that happens often in this game, especially in maps like Viaduct. Nice shot, Newton. I think you are a very good gamer. Um, sadly, because I didn't get killed by the sniper, I just got dealt damage upon by the sniper, I couldn't call where he is. So, very unfortunate death. Probably didn't cost us that much, because my combo was already scrappy at that point. I notice, now at this point in the game, I start noticing that this spy really, really likes to camp problem spot, as nice as it is. So, at this point, it's kind of an adjustment that I make, is that the sniper is, the spy is probably gonna be on problem spot a lot. That was a really terrible situation against possibly a scout with better aim. Because uh, I've had this happen to me before, where scouts just chase you on the right side and you can't really do anything much. Because you're like 100 HP or something, they just kill you in 3 shots in mid range. Obviously, you get sniped, you call it. You don't worry too much about it because it's not really a mistake you make, it's just the way this map works. It's like playing burn this and being killed by whatever snipers and fight. Just can't help it. There's one thing that the shotgun is better at than Flarion is dealing less than 30 damage at a time, and in that situation it probably saved my medic. Because it's quite difficult to hit a target so far away with the Flarion. But this isn't an argument I'm willing to to start in this video. If you do want to start a discussion on Shotgun vs. Flarion, we can just do it in the YouTube comments, feel free. I am not afraid of you. You should not be afraid of me. Demo taking huge damage, oh my god, the stiff guy, 1 HP. All skill, no luck. Kill the spy, while we're at it, oh yeah. Play by play, I should cast games, oh my god, I'm so good. Is the kind of things that go through your head when you're in a game. And it might seem shallow, and it might seem crude, and possibly douchebaggy. But psyching yourself up does help you hit your shots. Psychological advantages are very important in this game. Now I have like 25 HP, and I st steal the kill, and I get picked off, but it's okay. Because we're being aggressive, and see where that demo is, see where my team is. The demo cannot contest the point at all, because we made so much space. And that's, that's a thing that a lot of people undervalue a lot in this game, is making space for your team. And I think Pyro especially, it doesn't seem like it, but... Let's think of Pyro as a, uh, a gay person with a, with a safety bubble around him, right? People don't want to approach that safety bubble in the I don't even know why I said gay people. Anyway, yeah, 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 um, you have a safety bubble. Kind of, as you go forward, the bubble goes into your enemy, and the enemy is like, Oh my god, I don't want to be on fire, it is so annoying. So you just go, go forward, expand the safety bubble. It's really good for your team, it's really good, it's really bad for the enemy team. I want the spy, oh my god, please, no, thank you. I thought I was gonna hit the invisible spy. I guess it's something to work in, to an extent. Oh my god, cringe about getting medic player, so good! Um, 
yeah, tracking invisible spice is difficult because uh, you'd be surprised how good spies get at strafing in the air after playing this game for thousands of hours. And more often than not, than not they they focus on uh, on just being cunts. No, on uh, strafing in such a way that when in the precise moment where he goes invisible, he strafes in a completely random direction and you can't see it. I know there's a spy in front of me, it's probably gonna shotgun me because I saw a health curse. Although granted this what for uh, I'm I'm so gonna die. Why am I not dead yet? But you can do it. You can do it. See even then he was jumping over my head and I barely got the edge of his feet. That's what Yeah okay, sandwich. That's what spies do. They just annoy you all the time. Bullshit class, hate it. Remove breeze. Snipe the cliff, call it. Very good, very good. Now, my medic's not here, so we both have shit health, we can't do anything. This point is getting given up on definitely. Especially since we have no Pidox. No Pidox, as in not our main heavy. Because, uh. Yeah, it takes confidence to kind of lead a team. If you're off-passing and you're subbing, it's difficult. Now there, uh, I heard the call that Hilder's gonna jump the med. He's probably being Kydus. Um, so, again, even though it's not much, you can definitely do... I don't know how I lost him there. But yeah, you definitely can do some damage. And I believe that 20 damage ended up helping a fair bit. Possibly saving like a sticky or something, which can be good if you're just jumping forward. I am still annoyed about missing that spy, so I end up spy checking more than I usually would. Overchasing spies is bad, especially in Viaduct, because it's so easy to just take a different entry and out outflank the pyro. Thanks Emilio! Great movie. Um, you're much better off on smaller maps or well tighter corridors or anything. Just uh, just sticking to your teammates. One kind of small thing you can do is mind game the spy. Because chances are, if he's watching you and he sees you go forward, he's gonna take this as a cue to go in. So you are to an extent able to manipulate when the spy is gonna strike. Like there, I didn't get broken in over because I went forward, except that time I wasn't really thinking. Plus, I didn't really know where my medic was somehow. Excuses, excuses. I think we can still DM though. See, it's just a demo, man. I don't like. 300 damage there. Even follows up. They have no demo, we have a lot of spawners. Hopefully, we're able to take it. Honestly, we should be able to just plus forward. But my demo is dying to the pyro. My gold. Yeah, it might take a while. But there's one second on the clock for us, two minutes for them. So, usually in a situation like this, we'd call. Or well, I would call, I guess. To not panic too much, call. Call and think to myself that there's not much reason to panic in that situation. Because see, if people keep going in one by one like our scout just did, we're just gonna keep dying alone. Whereas we can just get good health, get positions, you know, win the game. I can't I could have fought the medic, but teammates were close to him, or well enemies his teammates were close to him. And I had 40 HP. Much better to stay alive. So there's like 50 HP, which means he's probably gonna have to get the health and come back in. But it does save you time, and chasing him would have been bad. In retrospect, I probably didn't really think much. I probably didn't realize how uh, little there is on the clock. Because, yeah, I, I should have just stayed on the point if we're just gonna win. I guess a moral of this story is that even if even if you do well, which I did, I, I'm actually going to show the logs quickly. Uh, if I can add window capture, no monitor capture, that's the one. Okay, okay, this is the monitor. No porn tabs open, good, good. This is the stats, me and problem in the top, top fragging, which is really nice. I also get a lot of assists. Brag, brag, hint, hint, like, like, subscribe, subscribe. Um. But yeah, even in a game where you seem to do stellar, there is still a lot of mistakes that you can notice just by reviewing your demo. It's a really good thing to do. As as a kind of habit. 
granted it does take a lot of time and hopefully this video will be helpful to you if you're too lazy of a person to watch your own demos and wanna see other people think for you calling you out I'm just kidding I love you okay uh, thank you for watching there will probably be more coming in the coming days slash weeks if you have any feedback feel free to leave it in the comments I try to respond to and read to as many as I can some of you probably are gonna call me names and I'll be very sad at that and some of you will be positive and I will be much more thankful than I will be sad about the other people so thank you and goodbye